Hello and welcome to the Faces of Africa Pocket Edition, where we dissect and discuss the topics covered in our weekly documentary show, which takes you through the continent's history, cultures and major issues through exploring great personalities. This week on Faces of Africa podcast, it's all about sports. We are airing a documentary on the Maasai cricket warriors and also talk about the ongoing Olympic Games in Paris, France. I'm Jeff Mode and I'm joined by... Sadiq Shaban. Jeff, thank you for having me. Definitely. So Sadiq, tell me, have you watched uh, the Faces of Africa documentary on the Maasai cricket warriors? Hey, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, the production is uh, A1, the content, uh, you know, flowing very well. Correct. Having these guys on a global media station. Correct. Uh, you know, discussing issues. Uh, that is in it in mm-hmm. the sport. Yes. Uh, these guys are using that cricket, of yes. course, to yes. talk about issues like conservation, mm-hmm. female genital mutilation. Yes. There's also biting drought in that area. Yeah. So going there and, and, and doing that documentary, you know, by uh, Faces of Africa, just, uh, you know, puts these people on a very vantage position. Those issues coming to fall. Not every time you see Masai uh, playing cricket, that was very different. It's like um, a bringing together of two different cultures. The cricket and the Maasai culture. What, what what's your take on it? Looks like winter in Africa, Jeff, for some sort, right? Because you don't get to see, you know, uh, cricket. And Kenya is not such a big cricket nation, mm-hmm. by the way. Yes. I think very few people remember Kenya hosted, you know, co-hosted with mm-hmm. South Africa the 2003 Cricket World Cup, ICC mm-hmm. Cricket mm-hmm. World Cup, mm-hmm. and that was the last time really Kenyans saw something very big about the cricket team. Yes. I'm afraid over the years the cricket team hasn't done very well. Okay. They've had leadership wrangles yes. uh, over the years, yes. uh, but then something very fresh comes out of the game mm-hmm. away from the politics and and, 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 and and the politics of mismanagement so to speak yes. you go to a place like like Kipia, yes. and you see Maasai is playing cricket i know let's switch gears and talk about the olympics because the olympics are happening right now how is africa faring on the olympics proof have begun for africa this week uh, with the finals of many, uh, ma- many, many athletics events, we've seen top African athletes, you know, competing. Uh, we have the likes of Uganda, who have already won a medal. Uh, Kenya, the women's 5,000. Uh, Uganda, men's uh, five, uh, you know, 10,000 meters. We also have South Africa, who won uh, gold in swimming. Okay. And Tunisia, yes. a 17-year-old, uh, you know, in gymnastics, okay. artistic gymnastics. Yes. It's never happened. It's the yes. first time ever in the history right. that an African winning medal of any color yes. in a artistic gymnasium and that is just a small part just picking up on the point that you've raised about an algerian winning an olympic medal in gymnastics africa is not known for such sporting disciplines right why doesn't africa is it the is it the infrastructure is it that we only concentrate on a very narrow uh, sporting uh, bandwidth or what's what's that all about we've never really looked beyond athletics for some reason uh, to diversify here most of these sports also inqu- require a lot of investment and infrastructure. Qualifying for these events is really expensive and most of these qualifiers sometimes are held outside Africa. So you find that a lot of African federations and governments may not put that much money uh, to take people, for example, to go and qualify in Europe. Do you think these other continents are way ahead of Africa and we are playing catch-up? I think the standard for sports in Africa really is low. Uh, we don't have a lot of sponsorship, this? sponsorship, infrastructure. And uh, in some areas, uh, you know, the, 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 the political instability has made it very difficult for even for sport to thrive. And then the issue of corruption is endemic in Africa. Mm, uh, yes. We've had, uh, for example, in, in, in countries where money meant for development of a sport has been misappropriated. Let's come back to Kenya. There was a bit of controversy with uh, the 5,000 meters with our very talented Faith Kipiegon and uh, the Ethiopian athlete. The Ethiopian uh, nearly costed Kipiegon her medal. Is that her standard of running? Because this is not the first time she's doing that. Or w- w- what was happening about that? Your thoughts? Um, the, the the Kenyan official, the Kenyan Olympic officials went and lodged an appeal against the initial disqualification of Faith Kipiego. The technical foul here was characterized as obstruction. Okay. But upon review mm-hmm. of um, the the conduct of athletes on that lane yes it was deemed that that was not obstruction it okay. was a general push and pull yes. that were you know eliminated and uh, got faith in in in, in a in, in a catch-22 situation she would have stepped out of the truck and got disqualified yes but as you say yes this is not the first time yes uh again godav segai yes. had a blistering race yes uh, at the 2023 world athletics championship in budapest yes against sifan hassan and Correct. many people remember that sifan hassan tumbled mm-hmm. with just 
just 10 meters to go. Yes. Uh, you know, there was no penalty in that. Yes. I mean, the, the technical officials didn't, you know, uh, didn't punish her at the time. But then again, for faith, it was um, it was a restoration of faith. Yes. Faith in that medal and faith in the fact that she still has 1,500 meters to run. She is a world record holder. Correct. She's the Olympic champion over the distance, going for her third medal in this event. Yes. And she now says with that appeal, you know, successful, then she will compete, uh, you know, favorably in 1,500 meters. Now, let's switch gears uh, slightly and talk about, we've seen a lot of athletes that were born and bred in Africa and Kenya, for, for instance, um, competing for other nations. We have Yavi, who's competing for Bahrain. Yeah, Wilfred, Wilfred Yavi. Wilfred Yavi is uh, the current uh, steeplechase champion. Yes. Uh, she comes from Kenya, Machakos County here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, very close to the capital yes, city, Nairobi. Yes, yes. She's just one of the many athletes who have changed allegiance over the years. Why? Is it because of corruption? Is it that we don't appreciate our athletes? What causes these people to just leave their back country and go compete for other nations? Better prospects, Jeff. If better prospects, better opportunities, but importantly, making the Kenyan team to the World Championship, the Commonwealth, the African Championship, and the Olympics is probably one of the most hardest uh, things that athletes have had uh, to do because it's very competitive. There is a lot of talent coming in through the ranks every time and even seasoned athletes must fight must fight for their place in the team it doesn't matter if you're the defending champion it doesn't matter if you're the holder of the record you have to come and compete against the rest this thing began way in you know early 2000 when uh steven chirono uh you know formerly of kenya known later as saif shine shahid yes went to qatar mm -hmm. after competing for kenya at the 2002 commonwealth games in manchester yes. and kenyans were caught off guard because this is a person who competed for kenya yes. at the commonwealth the yes. previous year the next year he was competing for you know for bahrain and over the years we've had many kenyans not just going to bahrain we've had kenyans going to romania yes. we've had kenyans changing allegiance to the u.s yes we've had kenyans running for you know other countries mm -hmm. uh, and so they are looking for better prospects uh prospects, prospects of life uh winning medals mm -hmm. and by the way for the adopted countries if you win a gold medal uh, you really get rewarded very, very handsomely. We are talking about financial rewards. We are talking about, you know, assets being given to you. But, but Sadiq, I, I want to be first lately with you. You said most of them change because of the rewards that they get. What if Kenya or the African nations just tried to match what the other it's countries... It's impossible. It's actually very impossible. You Why? cannot, for instance, uh, compete with countries that have natural resources, uh, minerals and, 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 and oil. For example, petrol oil. And these are people who can afford to give you, for example, uh, if you win a gold medal in one of these countries, I'm not going to mention a country, uh, for one of the Kenyan athletes who went abroad told us one time that if you win a gold medal in those countries, mm -hmm. you are likely to get up to 200,000 US dollars. That's, and, a, that's an amount Kenya can, can afford. And Kenya is wealthy. Right? Up, to, up to a million dollars in yep. some instances. So mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine winning a million dollars, you know, for just winning a gold medal over 100 meters or over 200 meters mm -hmm. or even over 3,000 meters temperatures. We are talking about nine or 10 minutes of work that will earn you a million dollars. You can never get that money in Africa in your entire lifetime. Then add that with a lifetime stipend. These guys are paid stipend or pension yes. every month wow. for the rest of their lives. Okay. So you're getting, for example, uh, uh, Jeff, you, you're getting fifty thousand dollars every month, yes. or ten thousand yes. dollars every month. Yes. You know, for the rest of their life. Yeah. Th that is a lot. And already you've been naturalized. Mm. You have a, a residency there. Your family is taken care of. Mm. So the allure of money and and better life on the other side would even make me change my own uh, allegiance. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, not to belabor the point, Sadiq, but I, I I believe with proper organization and the money that a country like Kenya has, we can be able to make our athletes comfortable. You want to tell me we, we cannot be able to do that? We are doing that, Jeff, yeah. but using a sort of, if you if you like to call it reverse psychology. Uh -huh. This is what Kenya is doing now. Yes. After learning of uh, the talent flight Yes. by top athletes over the years. Correct. What they have done now is yes. that they are offering Kenyan athletes employment you see? with the discipline forces. See? Not just any other job where you can put in your resignation letter tomorrow and leave. Mm. They make you an officer of the law, either with the Kenya Defense Forces, Correct. the Kenya Police. So that means they tie you down here. Yes. Number two, 
they have the Kenya now for instance has a reward scheme where if you win a gold medal yes. you get about 500,000 Kenyan shillings see how much do dollars is that about 30,000 yeah, about 30, 30, dollars yeah, about 35,000 yeah, yeah, 35,000 yes. dollars okay Plus, oh, yeah, give or take, and yes. then anybody else also who wins silver yes. gets something yes. about you know 60% of mm -hmm. that yeah. and new one which was also recently introduced yes. a house in Nairobi an there affordable system a house in the you know an affordable housing scheme by the government yes so faith kipiegon for example will tell you recently got five million uh, kenya shillings yes. for setting the world record Correct. in 1500 meters yes. she also got a house yes. here in nairobi yes. which was given to her by the government and the government of kenya said anybody also at the olympics yes. or the world championship yes. or the commonwealth Correct. who wins gold yes. will also get similar treatment but do you think that's enough jeff I, I think it's a start it's a good start i think it's a good start because it had to take the 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 talent drain quote unquote for them to wake up and smell the coffee and see we need to treat our athletes better but but unlike other countries kenya has enormous talent supply which comes up every time we have more athletes than we know in fact at this point yes we are registering athletes yes because we do not have a national database yes of athletes oh so you don't have to worry about yeah. one person going yeah. away yes. for everyone that goes yes there are probably 10 others coming to fill that Who are come oh interesting yes. Finally, what should we expect in the coming days in the 2024 Olympic Games, Sadiq, as we come to, our, to the end of our podcast? For Africa, this could be a springboard yes. for 2028 Olympic Games in LA. Yes. We may or may not get to the target, mm -hmm. but I foresee yes. individual brilliance yes. from some African athletes. For Africa, uh, not too much expectation this time. Let's see what we can get as yes. a springboard to 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles, the US. Thank you so much, Sadiq. Asante sana. Thank you for having me.